what always amazed me about Frazetta stuff was that the singular image of that cover or that that art piece or that album cover or whatever right that singular piece told a story uh, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah i have a hard time telling a story in 24 pages sure with with multiple pen he could tell an entire story he with could. just a Would singular image I floated this idea last week, and here it is this week. We are going to have a new feature on this program as often as we can do it. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, there's a lot of artists out there. We just want to take an opportunity to maybe introduce some people uh, who are, let's say, younger or new to the industry to some people that they might not know about, you know, maybe uh give a little bit of our, you know, like I said, a lot of us are artists, give our own impressions of, of people who are really at the top of their game, uh, introduce you to, to, to some people. Um, or for people who do know these people, maybe just give a moment to, to uh, whether you're a, a, a guest on here or you are watching this, give you an opportunity to talk about, um, you know, some great art, <laughs> which I think is pretty fun. So uh, what I'm going to do is hopefully not crash the system here and add this to the stream. Hey, there it is right there. And that is called The Death Dealer by Frank Frazetta. And I'm going to give you a little background on, on Frazetta. Um, let's see, I'll take this off because we're now covering up Sean's pretty face. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank Frazetta, who was born in uh, February 9th, 1928 and died in 2010 was an American fantasy and science fiction artist noted for comic books, paperback book covers, paintings, posters, LP record album covers, and other media. He is often referred to as the godfather of fantasy art. And by the way, it's downhill from here, folks. <laughs> we, we start with, with Frazetta, and everyone will be unfavorably compared to him from now on. And uh, he's one of the most renowned illustrators, period, fantasy whatever, of the 20th century. He was also a subject of a 2003 documentary, Painting with Fire. Frazetta was inducted into the comic book industry's Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame, the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame, the Society of Illustrators Hall of Fame, the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, and was awarded a Life Achievement Award from the World Fantasy Convention. Uh, I mean, you know, he won everything that he could win. Guillermo del Toro, the Oscar-nominated filmmaker, said in a 2010 Los Angeles Times article, that Frazetta was nothing less than, quote, an Olympic artist that defied fantasy art for the 20th century. Del Toro went on to say, quote, he gave the world a new pantheon of heroes. He somehow created a second narrative layer for every book he ever illustrated. That is so true. Um, Frazetta's Princess of Mars painting, which we'll look at here in a minute, in a minute recently sold for $1.2 million on September 11th, 2020. Egyptian Queen holds the all-time fantasy art record of 5.4 million. It sold in 2019. So this here is Death Dealer. And, you know, if you want, I mean, this is kind of the iconic, uh, you know, Frank Frazetta. And by the way, you guys can come in here uh, and talk about this stuff as much as you want to. But, uh, you know, this is a good it, example. I believe that? that was used on a Molly Hatchet album cover, if I remember. I bet Some, you're right. And I don't know of anybody in our generation who hasn't had some sort of influence with Frazetta. No. You yeah. know? Everyone is either directly influenced by yeah. Frazetta or influenced by people who are influenced by Frazetta. Because you, you, know? you can see you can see you can see uh Frazetta's influence in Beasley, specifically Beasley's artwork. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the, the darkness, yeah, the shadows. Um, you know, things that things that stick out with Frazetta artwork is, you know, the, the the flowing way. I mean, he this is painted artwork, folks. Yeah, like really painted, like oil paint. You know, look in the background here. This kind of silky looking background he's got here. L look at the look at the forms on these characters. Form, you know, the way that stuff bends and 
you know, references back to each other. The detail, like in the saddle here, that's the, the lighting is unbelievable. Look at the light. This is top lit, actually almost from behind, but it's coming down on the top and see the, you know, the lighting coming in here. Uh, there's no way you can reference this, folks. There's no dude that stands there and does this, you know, yeah. just a master of figuring out how light would hit this sort of thing. Um, you know, and it's and it when you get up close to it, like you get you get close to like the hooves here and stuff, it almost becomes like abstract. You look at if you just looked at that, you'd be like, What the hell is that? But, <laughs> right. then, you, but then when you pull back from it, it's just so beautiful. Just so, you know, the the art, the 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 uh you know, the, the forms that he has here, the lighting, the the detail, the flourish. The, the colors, notice how he's kind of got this kind of reddish color that's coming in here and stuff. Really just a masterful piece. One of the things that always struck me about, <clears throat> excuse me, struck me about uh, Frazetta, which whenever I, I first, I've been illustrating all my life. I mean, literally, my mother said that I, I came out of the womb with a pencil in one hand and a crayon <laughs> in the other. <laughs> Uh, but the, the moment that I, I, I actually started, you know, focusing in on stuff and, if, uh, I, I even remember the year it was 81, I believe I, I went up to my mom and dad and I said, I, I want to do comics. I want to do comics the rest of my life. And they, of course they were like, you're stupid, but, uh, <laughs> you're gonna you know, what? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, once we got past that, though, uh, my dad was very, very much, you know, pushing uh, various artists. And, and one of the ones, because my dad read yep. a lot, I, yeah, was I, I uh, a uh, Frazetta, who had done the, uh, the covers for Conan. And he did a lot of covers for Conan. And mm -hmm. what always amazed me about Frazetta stuff was that the singular image of that cover or that that art piece or that album cover or whatever right that singular piece told a story uh, exactly yeah. yeah i have a hard time telling a story in 24 pages sure with with multiple pan he could tell an entire story he with could. just a but singular image and, and look, folks, this was in the 60s and 70s, by and large, maybe a bit of the 80s. This was, he defined this fantasy look. This is, this comes from his head, folks. The, Anyone who's doing Dungeons and Dragons character designs or something right now, they're doing it on the back of Frank Frazetta. Exactly. The, yeah. The Definitely. designs that <laughs> he had influenced the Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan films. Of course. Yes. In Literally. every fantasy film that happened. Literally, Conan would not look the way he does in the comics, in the in the whatever the Conan piece that's coming up here, you'll see whatever exactly format. What it looks like. He defined what what Conan was going to look like. Uh you know the and you know and what what made him such a such a unique character in his own right was art was not his world. That's what he did for work. Uh, but that was not who he was. He was a huge lover of baseball. He was a huge fanatic of photography. He, he was such a, a, a unique individual. His, he has a, 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 a he did into bodybuilding too. Yeah. He, yeah. He was into bodybuilding. He looked uh, like his characters, and that's not a coincidence. I mean, no, you know, he, he I, used himself as reference for his his characters. He he was a he was an amazing he was an amazing person all around. Uh, I did not and, use myself as reference for my characters. If, uh, <laughs> and and his kids are you know they're they're not the artists, but by golly, they're 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 keeping the name Frazetta alive by touring his artwork and keeping uh, the museum. Uh, well, Robert at Rodriguez his home is, is Robert is Rodriguez. I mean, he, he, uh, he does stuff down in Austin. He's purchased uh, uh, several original Frazetta yeah. pieces that he takes on tour. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, 
I, I can't remember where his where his his home is. Uh, but that's where his Somewhere museum is. North northeast. Someone help us out yeah. who's watching this. So in Pennsylvania. So my favorite my favorite Frazetta piece is the uh, Fire and Ice movie poster. That is beautiful. I think I have that, although I, I'm not sure. Um, Ronnie has wants to talk about John Basima. Uh, I think that that uh, John Basima that earlier today uh, that Sean shared something that has a, mm -hmm. a big book out in 2022. Um, yeah, John Basima unquestionably influenced by Frank Frazetta, but also mm -hmm. a yeah. giant unto himself. True. Um, Ronnie says, oh my God, I can't wait for this segment. I'm listening very close. <laughs> uh, Brian says, Frazetta is Jerry the King Lawler's favorite. He had a big chunk of his autobiography dedicated to discussing Frazetta. That's interesting. Very yeah, interesting. It, uh, believe it or not, uh, Lawler's an artist himself, and I've seen some of his artwork. Right. And, yeah. and he's, uh, I think he illustrated one of uh, uh, Mick Foley's children's books. Nice. Oh, so okay. yeah. I vaguely remember something about that. I, yeah, so, yeah, I remember that's funny. So I would, I would definitely look, uh, if you haven't seen Jerry Lawler's artwork, I would definitely look it up. It's, it's, he's actually good. Hmm. He's good. Ronnie says that Joe Jusco said that nobody painted like Frank because nobody thinks like Frank. He's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's absolutely true. There's you 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 can't you can't how how do I want to say this without just sounding condescending? Uh, I I personally I don't think like Frank. There's no way I could create like Frank. Here, listen to me talking. Yeah, Frank, just over here. No, um, Mr. <laughs> Frazetta. Mr. Uh, Frazetta. There, you, no one, no one conjured anything up like Frank. There, there's a, there's a, 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 a phrase, I guess you would say. Uh, everybody refers to uh, Frank Frazetta's woman, or Frank Frazetta women. They have a very particular look. They have a very particular. Uh, uh, way about them, which no other illustrator, with the exception of possibly Frank Cho, nobody yeah. has gotten that Fr type of, of woman. There's a Frazetta woman. You you cannot get away, or you or you cannot you cannot. I mean, look at this woman. Yeah. No one illustrates like this. If they're going to draw a, a, a female, they're not going to be soft. They're not going to be curvy. They're not going to be this. This is amazing. I mean, even this piece right here alone. Did, uh, did someone just win a thousand dollars? Or oh, that, that's that's my phone ringing off, <laughs> uh, and I can't turn it I off. Thought you won the lotto. I love uh, that. I love that ringtone, by the way. That's, that's uh, just the background painting in this, like the, the painting of the backgrounds, like that marble mm -hmm. column there. Yeah. And and you look at that. I mean, look at look at look at this right here. It's that's you, amazing. You, you haven't seen anything like this since like the Renaissance. You know, you go to the museum and you see these things that are like hundreds of years old. Nobody does like that does this other than Frasetta. You know, the, like that style harkens back. To those times and it's just i mean it's just the smoothness on there it almost you know if you just glance at it it almost looks like a photograph again look at the i mean on this deal he's he's literally highlight you can see a highlight here it's like a like a spotlight i mean yeah. it's set in a fantasy deal it's, that's not the case i mean this might be you know like moonlight or something coming in here but look at how she is highlighted just by the light and look at how the light falls off here brilliantly i like i mean this doesn't exist folks this is he didn't go into a place and figure this out this is craft this is brilliant genius level craft where he figured out how this column is going to be have a spotlight right here you know and and how the lights coming in and then like the sweep of all her dress here that that also is one motion from the top of her head down to here is one one curve and not to mention deal. 
not to mention the uh, the reflection off the pillar on the wall mm-hmm. on the opposite right, side. Right, right. over here. <laughs> it's just like right. It's just here you can see the reflection of this pillar, and then like how beautifully all this other stuff, which is you know he wants you to look at this. This is the this is the piece that sold for over five million. This is the uh, uh, Queen of Egypt. Nice. That sold for over five million dollars. L- look at how everything falls off down here in the in the background and stuff. But he didn't he didn't half ass it. <laughs> you know, no, no not still, at all. It's still a brilliant piece. Even you know, like this this rug down here is similar. It, it's desaturated, but it's the same color as her dress. But he's he's carried over these blues and all of this sort of stuff. But it's not lit like the dress. So the dress is beautiful and brilliant in blue, and this thing is is dull and stuff because again he's I mean it's just just really brilliant the way that this guy operates. I mean it's really stunning. Uh, speaking of Princess of Mars, this this piece right here is was my introduction to uh, Frank Frazetta, and it was on the cover of the um, you know the John Carver Warlord of Mars books and i remember going into um uh oh my gosh what was the name of the place was it walden books in crossroads mall and they had all of the john carter books stacked you know from end to end and i would pick those out and i would look at all of the covers you know like oh my gosh this is just amazing um you know because i was just i was just astounded and spellbound by the artwork um you know, once again, you have kind of a. Does this look like any Star Wars poster that you remember seeing? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, no, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see it. No, not, this, not at all. This thing, this kind of deal where you have, you know, the the hero and the heroine, and then you know some of the bit players, and you know. A, a big thing in the background. This is a movie poster that was duplicated over and over and over and over and over again th- back when they used uh, to paint movie posters. Uh, back during the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Transformers the movie, Star mm-hmm. Wars, everything, everything, everything. Has, has emulated this image right it's here. This right here. <laughs> it's this yeah, right here. They've em- emulated this image. Yes. Uh, if you get up a little closer, you can see, look at the uh, what, what is it called? Ambient occlusion. How about yes. that? How there about that go. for some art crap? There you, go. you can see the ambient ambient occlusion here in like here's the shadow, but he's got a little green coming in here. Look at how brilliantly this is a shadowed area, folks. But he's got a little bit of kind of you know another color that's coming in here. That's ambient occlusion. That's long before video games started adding ambient occlusion. <laughs> <laughs> long, long before that, folks. And again, you can see the what Sean called the Frazetta woman. I mean, that wasn't a Sean phrase. That's something that's been talked about no, for a long time. Uh, you know, that's a that's a real woman right there. That is, you know. He was asked about that. I remember seeing it. In fact, it might it might be on that Fire and Ice documentary, or Painting with Fire. Excuse me, Painting, Painting with, with Fire. fire. He uh, he was he was asked about the Frazetta woman. And he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I just I think I remember I, that. <laughs> I just I just draw women how I see women. And you see his wife next to him, he's like, Oh yeah. I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I mean, you, you look back on the photos whenever they uh, whenever they met and whenever they got uh, they first got married and they were traveling and, and all this and yeah, he's he was a great looking guy and she was a great looking girl. They, I mean, he, he used themselves. He used himself oh, yeah. and his wife as their own models. This actually might be. This actually might be Frazetta and his wife. It might be both of them. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, it could easily be the two of them. It would not shock me. Yeah, let's get a few comments in there. Uh, Russell says I started drawing around nine years old, and I remember trying to draw many of Frank's book covers from John Carter, Conan, and Tarzan. There it is. Mm-hmm. That his father had. Uh, Jury says, loving this segment, the lighting on the Princess of Mars piece is intriguing too. Um, Mike says, Frank only had one other artist work and trained under him, and that was Ken Kelly. Uh, mm. That's that's his work was a, a close comparison to Frazetta. I think uh, Ken Kelly did the uh, Star Wars poster. Folks. 
that's why I brought that up. Uh, Anthony mentions he used to work at Walden Books. Remember Walden Books, folks? That was that was where you got books, folks. Back in the olden days, back before Amazon. Uh, Ronnie says the luckiest Arthurs in the world had their publishers get Frazetta to paint a book cover. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I you hit the lottery when you... Yeah, I specifically remember the uh, the Conan covers the most. Mm -hmm. How about how about this? I think that is Conan, is it not? Uh, that that would be a Conan cover. Yeah. yeah. Um, look at the again. You kind of this is almost monochromatic. Now I want to. He's, he's got kind of say one thing look. about this piece. If if this is the one I'm I'm remembering correctly. Uh, Frank Frazetta had a bad habit of whenever the, his pieces were placed into his museum, which his museum was actually attached to his house. <laughs> right. You literally walk through a door, you're in the Frank Frazetta Museum. And at a point, his wife had to lock the door and take away the key because Frank would constantly go in, right. take down a piece, and continue working and retool on it. it and retool it <laughs> this piece here if i remember correctly he repainted because as he developed more as a as an illustrator there were things about it that he didn't like yeah. there were things that he thought that he could do better so he would paint over it. it and he I kept going and he kept going and finally she was like that's it i've had it <laughs> you're done out, uh, get out of the museum she kicked him out of his own museum <laughs> and locked the door so he couldn't get in there. Uh, but that, that just kind of goes back to... So that's where George Lucas gets it from. No yeah. kidding. <laughs> Except Lucas doesn't always make the right decisions. You're, you're right. Yeah, he, he needs a, a, a fine woman to take away the key. Well, he had one in Marsha Lucas, but he yes. let her go, unfortunately. Um, who edited the first couple of star wars films which by the way were really good <laughs> um i just want to do backgrounds like him For, forget his figures it would be really cool to do what is this how do you how do you do that <laughs> i mean that's just insane but look at the detail in there let's get really up on this thing look at the detail in this piece uh you know all of the the facial the facial expressions and, and the you know this this little you know thing here and all of this stuff i mean it's and it's all perfectly lit of course um you know that's just really a, a masterful piece i love this one this is one of the things that really strikes me about frazetta is you can see the comic book influence on how dynamic his characters can be that's a comic book pose folks i mean it's no different than you know whatever neil adams or jim lee or uh you know whatever any of your comic book people that is a comic book pose no doubt about it the jorge jimenez who's like one of my favorite guys right now who does batman he blurs his stuff you know he'll do a he'll do a batman thing and he'll be he'll show batman punching and he'll, he'll blur it look here at frazetta who's got his foot on this dude and there's action going on here he's blurring this out to show that there's action going on here that was 50 years ago that that's manual mm -hmm. <laughs> that's manually that's done. done that's yeah. done by hand folks by that's hand. not photoshop <laughs> that's not photoshop because photoshop wasn't a yeah. thing no and again, he's he's lit this kind of like by moonlight or something. It's got this kind of strange. And that <laughs> motion is look even at, in the cape. Please, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The the motion here, of like the whole stuff and the like and the the cape is all motion. But again, if you get up close, let's get up close. It, if you look at this, it starts to almost look abstract. That's brilliance. That's brilliance. He has an outline to this thing and put the colors and stuff in. He has built these cut. Look at he's got yellow here. You see some purple. He's got some red and stuff. Yes. No one would think. Let's put to, to make this, you know, this skin look correct. Let's put some yellow and purple and red and. But he's got it all in here, and then you you back up and it just looks perfect. That is pretty stunning. That's Can you zoom in on the Morning Star real quick? Sure. 
like the top the of the blood it. all yeah. over it. That's awesome. Yeah. Like with the yeah, shine. It's got running, it's got running blood and the yeah, the the perfect shine here that that yeah. defines oh, oh. the form on the metal and the blood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yes, you've got a little shine here on this blood. It it I I don't know. Did he take some chocolate syrup and put it on a ball <laughs> to get it to look like that? I don't know. It looks correct. It looks correct. I don't I mean, I don't know. It's pretty amazing this guy's phenomenal speaking of conan once again how many times have you seen, how many times have you seen this pose i have i've seen this this is like the first time i'm actually like familiar with seeing something like this uh and this is even messier than some of his other stuff i mean I, one of the things that like you know when i look at stuff as an artist i am in constant battle because I want to make things clean. I want to to render clean stuff. I'll second that. I fight that very, very hard. What, But what I like personally as a viewer and what I like personally as an artist, like the, the creation of something, is to be messy. I think being messy is what being an artist is being about, you know, is about. Like back when you were a kid and you, you put your fingers in some paint, you made a big mess on it. It was fun. That's what I try very hard is to get myself to be more messy, to give myself permission to be messy, both aesthetically because I think it looks cooler and also because it's just, it's more fun. It's more fun for me. Uh, one of my the quintessential messy artist. One of my uh, uh, art school instructors was, she called it being more painterly. Yes, <laughs> true. If you look at, like, let's compare to, to another great artist like Boris Vallejo, his stuff is clean and photogenic, yeah. but maybe too much. Maybe it goes too close to being photo perfect. Real, yeah, photo realistic. It loses yeah. a little bit of its life in comparison to this, which, I mean, this is messy. Look at it. You can see the actual... You can see the canvas on this, which is really, this is a nice transfer here. You know, you can see, I mean, this is taken from the actual piece. So you can really see what's going on. Look at how little it really defines her face and her hair and like all the stuff that's going on down here. There's not a lot. There's there not much there. Lot, there There's is a, a lot going on. But, you know, once again, you look at the, you know, there's your abstract art piece. What is that? I don't know. But you pull back and it just all forms this wonderful thing that he's got going on here. And look at how he, look at the other, you know, the other piece was kind of bluish and stuff. This one's got that real strong, you know, yellow look throughout the entire piece. That's, that's the brilliance right there. Mike says Simon Bisley had his moments in his paintings that would be close a close second to Frazetta's work. He he definitely leans into being messy. Yeah, yeah. There have been other artists who try to do this quality, but there is no one like him in his art. No one can do this. Pimpin ain't easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so hard to be painterly these days. Yeah, a lot of people really, I mean, like, go to Instagram. Look at how clean everything is. Everything yeah. is so clean, like, just insanely clean. Yeah. Um, people don't even really know how to react to your artwork if it's got a little, you know, schmuck. Mess, yeah. Oh, that's a... That one's one of my favorites. Piece. Look at how is look, look at what is going on here. This dude's... You know, rock and hair. <laughs> His rock star hair. What year is it? Um, it says 72. Okay. Look at how brilliant these bears are. That's that's the thing that, that gets me, or is the bears. That's uh, Man. just animals in general. You want to for, draw some bears? For me, well, I I have I have done a bear. I did a bear for uh, work a couple of years ago for uh, uh, an ad, so... Those are beautiful, brilliant bears. 
it's animals in general. Like I, a, a lot of people have a hard time transitioning mm -hmm. from doing people to animals. A little glint coming off of the sword there. If if mom's still watching, mom's one of those people. Oh yeah, <laughs> we should have her on for this segment. Since she's an art teacher. Oh, and uh, speaking of going back to uh, Beasley, mom and Beasley hit it off pretty well at a, at really? a comic book convention. So That's yeah, awesome. I had I had to leave them alone to to talk or you know, to talk shop. So <laughs> that's another story. Look at, but look yeah, look that how this little piece he is right here. Find his face, his face here. His face is in shadow, but the rest of the piece is bright because it's look in at, the snow. Look at those mountains in the background. You know, oh, yeah. it's not it's not clouds. That's that's mountain. No, no, no. And then there's fog. Yeah, fog here, and then snow here. He's you know he's got a whiteout on everything basically. <laughs> Maxine says you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to hear that story about Beasley. Beasley, Beasley. Uh. Ronnie says, what I like about Frazetta's work is that it's ethereal, smoking, has tons of movement. Agreed. Mike says, painterly is so tough. It's everything. <laughs> yeah, it's it's getting back to that uh, that kid inside you and just, you know, and being, uh, what do you call it, uh, loose. Look at how he's used this water to define this character. And then you've got this, look at how silky this water is in here. It's so silky. <laughs> and then you uh, look at all the stuff they got going on up here. This is another really, you can see the canvas here. You're, it's like actually kind of seeing it in a museum. You can see his strokes and what he's doing here. Oil painting. But look at these guys that are just kind of in the background. Look at how much stuff is going on here. Her hair is what distinct. If if she didn't have that dark hair and he didn't have it flared out here in a in a triangle, she would almost disappear. But because of that hair, because it's doing weird Medusa things, um, that's what defines that character. That's a super famous painting right there and again look at look at how he's got this strong yellow thing coming in here but what what's the what's the color that pops out the red it's that red man that super warm stunning red that he's got underneath this guy's you know kind of fur cape here wish i had a fur cape <laughs> Hashtag for Kate. You can use one of my coats and make. And I can. Faux, I can hey, definitely rock this look. Hey, faux cape. We can we can find we can find you some faux fur. That doesn't have to be an actual fur cape. Yeah. Oh, then never mind. The, we can find you, look. Okay, you can tie one of my coats and make it a cape. <laughs> we can find you. We can find you one of those. Who was it? Uh, IKEA, I think. Uh, they they have a bunch of fake fur that they yes. used in uh, Game of Thrones. Yes. So, oh yeah, they yeah. The fur carpets. That's one of his most realized pieces. And again, I mean, look at the detail in this in this helmet that he's got going on, and look at his eyes. Look at the intensity. The one thing that I I don't remember, and I'm I'm probably sure it was told, uh, the average time it took him to do one of these paintings. I want to know what I, it was. No. Yep, I'd like to know in, in the whole process and everything. I think he talks about that in that painting with fire. Uh, again, what a lot of people have to remember is he did artwork as a job. Right, right. So they would come up to him with, I've got this book. I need a cover. Can you get me a cover in like two or three days? <laughs> and he's got he's to paint this thing. He's got to come up with a concept. He's got to lay it out. He's got to paint it. He's got to uh, uh, secure it and get it to the publisher within three days. You know, I mean, this this is this is production art at its at, at, at its, its ultimate at its ultimate yeah. level. Absolutely. And so you 
you, you you've got to you've really got to understand that this what we you know sit there and look at and ponder oh the beauty oh the this is this was his work this is what he He's did cranking it out yeah it's, yeah it's not i think i will take the next six months to paint a picture no, right no. I, I just i would just like to know what the average the average turnaround time was for 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 his paintings a lot quicker uh, uh ronnie says he was able to bust out some of his paintings in a day mm -hmm. i i remember uh an interview where he he talked about he he got a deal he was uh he was asked if he could do this cover they need to have it uh at the uh at the post office shipping out the next day and he was like uh yeah i can do that uh i need let's see he's looking around his supplies he didn't have any uh he didn't have any canvas to paint on so he got uh what was it it was like a uh like a floor tile if I remember right. And he painted a book cover on a floor tile <laughs> and sent it off. Uh, it, it just, some of the stuff that the man, he, it didn't matter. He, he did what he had to do to get the work done. I was going to mention this earlier. Uh, you I, know, I, I wanted you, to show some of his comic book work. You, you talk, you know, we've, we've talked about his, uh, his ability to paint and, and to manipulate color and whatnot. But what a lot of people may not realize is he did get his start doing comic strips. Yeah. And his pen and ink stuff <laughs> is outrageous. Is that work, folks? Look at this. Uh, look at, this look at the horse. Right it's the it's the horse. It's the you horse know, it's insane. It's the horse. You look, know, look at these look at these strokes down here with this stuff. And again, this ain't Photoshop. He didn't. He can't hit. Uh, you know, redo or can you know control? What is it? Control. Control. Uh, control Z. Control, oh, control Z. Z. He control can't go Z. back on this. If it ain't right, it ain't right. And I mean, look look at these beautiful long silky strokes that he's got on this. He he put a little white in here. He's got a little white and stuff. But look at look at how beautiful this is. You know, when you do something like this right here, this area, man, you you're just going for it because there's nothing. You know, there's nothing that's holding you back here. You know, he didn't he didn't do it from up here. He's just doing it kind of in the middle to give a little texture here and stuff. Once you start doing this, man, you can get lost in some really bad lines. <laughs> but he just went for it, and uh, it's really nice. The a, a lot of his pen and ink work, I I, I don't feel that people understand or give him credit for a lot of the the pen and ink work that he that he did i know i personally whenever i i first you know started to to find out who frank frazetta was all those years ago i i didn't have any idea and uh yeah there's there's a huge 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 appreciation for what that man was able to create it's it's what they used to kind of ghost writer here <laughs> this guy on him. That's the original Ghost Rider. That's, that's, this is old school Ghost Rider. But look, look at how he, in this piece, this is my last piece. But look at how he, he worked so hard to make it the background dark, including this beautifully rendered train and this dude that's about to blow up some TNT and all this sort of stuff. He did all of this dark so that he could keep this, this character. Man, that shows up pretty nice right there, folks. That's a pretty good scan. So that he could make this white horse and this guy in this white outfit stand out so much because it's got dark stuff all around him. And look at the lines right here. And he's gone back in here with the white, you know. And look look at this tail. That's insane. Who published Ghost Rider originally? Was it Harris? Mm. Uh oh crap. I, I knew this answer. Yeah. I'm gonna know. have to look that up again. I know it wasn't Marvel. Marvel bought it, no, or no. They, they got the rights to it or something, if I remember. But originally, I, th I thought it was it was a different... Oh. oh, that was my fault. I removed the other thing. I Jeez. Removed... Sorry. We're going to mix everyone up. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I can find it here. Mike Kennedy said Drew Struzan talked about the first Star Wars poster that he and another artist busted out in a couple of days. 
Ronnie says Struzan, he would be a good one to do. Uh, Struzan was awesome as well. There was a documentary on him, Mike, if you haven't seen it. And uh, Mike says that Fawcett published those ghost writers. Okay. Uh, it says here, uh, Magazine Enterprises. Hmm. Before it was uh, Marvel's first... Marvel's first ghostwriter look uh, was uh, based on the magazine Enterprises character Ghost Rider by Rex Fury, or with Rex Fury, created by Ray Crank and artist Dick Ayers. Hmm. All right. Thanks everyone for having fun with us here on huh. <laughs> with with Frank Frazetta. That I, that's we we can't do these segments this damn long, but it's hard not to with Frank Frazetta. With, it's it's hard with Frank Frazetta. Yeah, you really got to if you're going to cover him, you got to show his stuff. And, yeah. Uh, Hello, Task Force Geek fans. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoy our content, please leave a like, leave a comment, or you could subscribe and hit that bell so that you'll get notified every time that we put out a new video. Your individual help helps a lot. Thank you.